Hey guys, we're going to look at types of computers and their features and we're going to look at five different types of computers and what sort of features we would expect for those computers. Also tells us a little bit about the, t the sort of user for those computers. Our first one is the personal computer user, the average person who just wants to get a basic machine just to do the basic things. Okay, so what would that involve? Well, the desktop would most likely consist of a mouse and a keyboard and a monitor. They'd probably have things like speakers and a printer as well if they were spending a little bit of extra money and in terms of connectivity how would they connect or get online normally they'd have a router uh, something like you know AfriHost or Mweb or Vumatel or one of these companies and they would then connect via ADSL, Fiber or even LTE. That is your personal computer user. So what sort of specs are we looking at here, guys? We're looking at entry level to mid range. Entry level means when you go into a computer shop and you say to the guys, I want to buy a computer, it's my first time, and I just want something basic and easy to work with. That's an entry level computer. That means it'll probably come with about four gigs of RAM. You can maybe get another one, just a little bit more money for eight gigs of RAM, which is pretty darn good. It most likely has a 500 gigabyte hard disk drive, which is more than enough for the average user. Windows 10 often comes with a home edition because you don't need all the fancy bells and whistles for all of that stuff. Office applications. And then what would you use this computer for? Well, basically email, writing up documents and printing them out, for example browsing the web, going online, looking at YouTube, or um, uh, reading up on the news or things like that, following blogs and stuff like that. And also Netflix or Showmax, you know, entertainment and leisure sites like that. So that is a personal computer user and that is what they have. That's their sort of setup. All right, let's have a look at the next one. The next one is Soho. Now Soho, as you can see, it says small office, home office. This is someone who is running a business from their home. So they might have a little space in a room or, or a dedicated room or an area in the house where they've got their little table and they've got their computer and stuff set up. So what do they have? What sort of features do we see here? Well, in terms of devices, we're looking at a desktop machine or a laptop or a tablet or a laptop and a tablet even okay peripherals printer more than likely you have a printer because they will be printing out a lot of things and a webcam for just communicating and you know video chatting with uh, potential customers and clients and things like that connectivity same as the the entry level user you know router ADSL, Fiber, LTE, any one of those things they will probably have. And they might also have LTE in terms of like a dongle or something if they're traveling or if they're visiting or on the road, you know, meeting potential clients. What kind of setup are we talking about here? Well, this is more of a mid-range to high-end machine because you're doing a lot of work on this and this is your company that's running on this machine. So we need about 8 to 16 gigs of RAM, I would say. A 500 gig hard drive, but you know, if you're going to be running a business, a one terabyte is good for you. One terabyte HHD, uh, HHD, HDD, okay, hard disk drive, or an SSD, a solid state drive, which is even better because it means it's faster. Office and productivity apps. So Microsoft Office or any free Office programs that they, they might be on the computer, they, they'd definitely be using that. And of course, productivity apps, things like calendars and booking systems and diaries and you know, digital files and stuff like that. What would we be using this for? What kind of uh, setup? Well, uh, email, without a doubt, communication, being in touch with people, okay, spreadsheets, accounting. It's got a very business focus. That's what this machine is for, it's for running a business. So it's going to be a little bit different to your personal user. Let's look at the next one, mobile users. Okay, now I don't mean mobile as in just a mobile phone. I mean mobile as in like they travel a lot, okay, they move around a lot. So let's see, what kind of devices would a mobile user be, what would we expect them to have? Well, definitely a laptop, a smartphone and a tablet, or a smartphone or a tablet. One of these three, or maybe two, okay, I've got three of those out of the three, which is pretty good. And so you're moving around a lot, okay? What about peripherals then? If you're moving around a lot, you're not gonna be able to take a lot of stuff with you. However, you might find some people carry a mini projector around with them as well because they're doing consulting or sales or uh, you know just checking up on, on customers and doing presentations and things like that. So that would be a consideration. 
Also, a webcam or a microphone. If it's not built into the laptop, that is. Maybe they have a really nice webcam or a really nice microphone, like an extra thing that they plug into the computer, especially for video conferencing. Very, very handy. Connectivity. Well, this is where it's a little bit different to the first two that we've just done. Here, you're probably looking at LTE or mobile hotspots, okay? LTE, basic, or going through your smartphone, making your phone into a hotspot and then connecting to the internet via your uh, cellular connection. What kind of specs do we have here? Let's see. Mid-range to high-end, okay? Because this has got to be a powerful machine. It's, it's got to have a long battery life. It's got to last you. If you drop it while you're moving around, it's got to be protected. So a lot of money is going to go into this one. Mid-range to high-end. 8 gigs to 16 gigs, absolutely great. More than enough if it's someone who's really, really uh, into their business and they really like spending money on computers. It'll probably be like 32 gigs of RAM. Pretty easy. 500 gigs again to a terabyte hard drive or a SSD solid, solid state drive. Let me just try that again. Solid state drive. There, that's better. SSD. Again, office applications. What are they using this for? They're using it for working while they're traveling, presentations, communication, meetings, emailing, all that sort of stuff. Okay, maybe watching movies while they're on the, on a plane or something, stuff like that. Okay, so that is your mobile user, someone who's traveling a lot. Ah, the power user. Now we get to the big boys, okay? This is where like the power comes in because what do we have here? Now, power users are those people who need a lot of power out of their computer because of what it is they do for a living. Let's have a look. It could be a desktop or a laptop, okay? And it could consist of controllers, certain controllers, whether it be remotes, consoles, special keyboards, uh, or even a monitor, okay, or a fancy monitor, or dual monitors, or special monitors with webcams built into them, or all kinds of stuff, touch screens as well. Peripherals, speakers and a microphone, very, very important because uh, they will probably be using this a lot, okay? Connectivity, well, more than likely through a router, ADSL or fiber. I don't, I haven't seen a lot of guys do hardcore gaming, for example, on an LTE connection. I mean, unless I'm wrong, maybe, maybe I am, so maybe you can tell, tell me if you have. <laughs> It'll be interesting. So with a power user, now we're talking about a high-end machine, okay? Like this is top of the range, bring me the bells and whistles and all that stuff. 16 gigs to 128 gigs of RAM. I mean, that's insane, but we're talking power here. One terabyte, easily up to eight terabyte hard drive or a solid state drive for the maximum speed. I mean, you're gonna fly with this thing. A very powerful processor, probably like octa-core, okay? Octa-core means octa, means eight. So eight cores, yeah, like having eight processors in your computer. That is insane. What would be we be using this sort of powerful machine, this beast for? Well, it could be things like graphic design. Graphic designers need a lot of power for the software that they use. Digital video and audio editing. I mean, if they're doing digital video production and audio production, you need really, really solid powerful machines to handle all of this data and this processing power that's required that's what your power machine is for. Uh, professional gaming. Ask anyone who is a gamer. They will want the top of the top. The best of the best. Top of the best. The best of the top. Okay, you know what I'm saying. All right. The most RAM, the biggest hard drive, the SSD, you name it. The best graphical processing units, the best CPUs. That's what they want for the power. Okay. That's our power user. All right. Super duper. Let's go on to our last one. Disabled users. Now, when we talk about disabled users, we're talking more about systems related to software and hardware, okay? So it's more it's not about the machines, so to speak, that like uh, it's a different to a desktop or different to a laptop. It's more about what the machine can do. So you will find that there will be various controllers or um, remotes or buttons or keyboards. It just, it depends on what it is for. You might find things like really nice screens, eye tracking software, eye tracking hardware, which actually then tracks your eye as you're moving. You can then control the mouse on a screen using just your eyes. That is pretty cool. I'd love to have one of those actually. Text-to-speech, 
all right, when something on the screen is read back to you. And also the other way around, speech to text, when you give instructions or you speak or dictate something and it then appears on the screen. There's also devices such as sip and puff devices which link into all the software and hardware. So you can blow into a straw or suck on the straw or bite down onto it and if it's got pressure sensitive pads, think to control various mechanisms around you. Even things like uh, screen resolution and content contrast which is built into Windows at the moment if you go to your Windows settings go look up accessibility and have a look and see what you can actually uh, put on your computer into, or, or activate is a better word have a look at Windows settings see what you can activate in terms of accessibility you'll be very surprised it's amazing so just to <clears throat> to finish off custom purpose-built machines custom software it consists of specific mechanisms for different levels of accessibility so it depends on if it's people with hard of hearing uh, don't have great eyesight poor motor control or paralyzed from the waist down or the neck down all these different things okay the, that's what you've got to look look at in terms of disabled users and the mechanisms in terms of hardware and software that we have and there you have all of our five different types of computers and their features.